the Japanese Imperial Army would be notorious for their brutal treatment of prisoners, civilians, and other atrocities during the Second World War. The Navy wouldn't be immune to such lack of consideration to human life, and this would sadly result in the sinking of AHS Centaur, an Australian hospital ship with clear demarkings displayed. Before the war, the ship was a cargo ship, but with intense fighting in the Papua New Guinea campaign in 1942, the ship would see its transformation into a hospital ship with large Red Cross designations across the bow. By its conversion in 1943, AHS Centaur could carry 250 hospital beds and staff for around 18 days. She would be given a fresh coat of paint with a green band and several large red crosses would be visible. As you can see from this photo from the era, the newly painted red crosses. At night, the ship would be illuminated by internal and external lights. Shortly after 4 a.m. in the morning of May 14, 1943, on her third voyage since the conversion, AHS Centaur would be hit by a torpedo on the port side. The torpedo would rupture the fuel tank and ignite in a massive explosion. The ensuing chaos would be a fatal mix of burning oil and water rushing into the holes of the ship. The hospital ship would sink bow first and then into two and in three quick minutes, the AHS Centaur would disappear beneath the seas. The rapid sinking of the ship, while many of the passengers were asleep, would lead to the passing of 268 lives, a staggering amount of lives. The news would spread globally once released, hitting papers such as New York Times and the Montreal Gazette. The 64 survivors would be in the water for more than 30 hours. Waters which were infested by sharks and the rapid nature of the sinking meant that few were actually prepared. The casualty numbers would be high with all but one nurse perishing, aptly named Sister Savage. She wouldn't be without her wounds, but while in the water would help the survivors gather their spirit and helped organize them into a sing-along. Here is a short interview from her ordeal. Well, I felt in the right direction so that I wouldn't break my neck and just went into the water. And by then the ship was sinking mm. and I went down with the suction of the ship and I thought... There is a simulation done through Blender by Jesse Gillett. I've attached a small clip and put in a link in the description of the video. Speaking of links, in the description I've also attached my sources, which will primarily come from the Australian War Memorial Australian Government website, which you can further explore. The public outrage to the incident would be high as the act was considered a war crime under the 1907 Hague Convention, in which Japan was a signatory. An official complaint would be sent, which would be a joint effort by the Australian Armed Forces, Government, and General MacArthur, and it would be received by the Japanese on May 29, 1943. This would be a little over two weeks after the event, and by December, a response had returned by the Japanese saying that they had no information and took no responsibility for what had happened. Identifying the attack submarine would prove to be a challenge in the time of the sinking. There were more than 20 Japanese subs known to operate in the area, and historians would debate on the true identity 
of the ship that fired their torpedoes at AHS Centaur. The submarine to be the prime suspect would be Japanese submarine I-177, which was commanded by Lieutenant Commander Nakagawa. The sinking of many Japanese submarines would mean that it would be difficult to piece together which submarines were responsible for which ships. However, retired Rear Admiral Hanayoshi Sakamoto stated that Nakagawa and the I-177 would be responsible for the attack on Centaur in his book, History of Submarine Warfare. Since Sakamoto's book is considered as part of Japanese Navy official history, many have concluded that Nakagawa was responsible for the horrendous attack on AHS Centaur. Astonishingly, Nakagawa would survive the war and would be put on trial for his actions in the Indian Ocean. Less than a year after the AHS Centaur sinking, while commanding a submarine I-37, he would order the machine gunning of survivors from torpedo ships like the British Chivalry. His trial would result in a conviction and he would serve four years at Tsugamo Prison. A general amnesty of all Japanese war criminals would be placed, and by the end of 1950s, all Japanese war criminals convicted by military tribunals would be released. As for Lieutenant Commander Nakagawa, he would die in 1991 and wouldn't speak about the fate of AHS Centaur. As always, thank you for sticking until the end of the video and hope that you have learned a little bit more about history and the events of World War II. I plan on releasing more World War II and covert operations videos going over some of the events, so definitely like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I've included a bunch of links in the description. There is a ton of information that you can find yourself immersed into. Thank you, and don't forget to have a phenomenal day.